one year. So right. we, yeah, yeah, I mean it's been good. So that's really helpful. Yeah. Next up, phone number. Are we ready online? Oh, bring my feet. We're still getting showing the today. You already hit record? People can see me? Yeah. I could see you before. Oh, hold on. Good morning, everyone. No one wants to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Um, so I'm Krista Morose. Typically, we have a bunch of presenters at our workshops, but you get just me today. Hey. Um, so today we're talking about step four and five metrics and reporting. And so um, I want this to be interactive. We have plenty of time for questions um, throughout. So let me know if anything comes up, as well as folks online to use the chat box. And Danielle here can um, let us know what your questions are. And then, um, at 10 o'clock, you can feel free to either leave or stay, and we can do more workshopping, um, and we'll go through that a little bit more later um, on if you have specific questions that you want to go through um, or partner, pair up with another city that's already gone through it, and maybe you're new, um, so there's opportunities there um, at 10 o'clock. So we can go to the next slide. I can have the clicker. A clicker. So, can we just go around and do some introductions really quickly? And for those of you online, um, I would love to hear your name, city, and um, what step you're at, and if you personally have done metrics reporting before for step four or five, even if your city's done it before, but maybe you're new to it, I would love to know that information as well. So, I already said mine. Justin Mark on City of Falcon Heights. Um, I did step four or five this past year. A lot of help from Kristen. So um, I've done one round myself. Danielle, you wanna say hello? Uh, sure. My name is Danielle. I'm in the communication uh, I'm the communications coordinator at the League of Minnesota Cities and um, I'm merely observing the metrics, the wonder of metrics. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> the wonder. Uh. I'm Cassandra. I'm recycling coordinator for West St. Paul, South St. Paul, Mendota Heights, and Sunfish Lake. Of my cities that do participate, we're at step two. Uh, Philip Music. Um, I'm in the, in the assistance division over at the MPCA, and I'm the Green Step Coordinator. I'm with Kristen. Laura Milberg, PCA, uh, Best Practice Advisor for um, Best Practices three green buildings and 29 uh, climate resilience and I've been working with Kristen and Philip on developing a climate resilience metric, yeah, some of which you'll hear about. Uh, Sue Bass, uh, City of Burnsville. Uh, for today, I'm, that's what I'm representing, and we are a 2017 Step 5 city, so uh, we can update that. Megan Schley from the City of Hastings. We're at step three right now, trying to gain to step four. Uh, Nathan First Plan, City of Jordan. We are at step three as well, looking to get to step four and have an eighth grade set. So excited to learn. My name is Moni Sudan. I work for the Metropolitan Council. We support a lot of the metro, um, our metro communities with uh, data for greenhouse gas. I'm Sonny Mindswell. I'm actually not affiliated with anything, but I'm uh, interested in learning more about local government and sustainability for about five years. I'm Leslie McKenzie. I'm the Senate representative for Marina St. Frank, and we are step three. I'm Emma Pearson. I'm a street crew member for the city of Silicon Valley, and I have not done any of this living. I'm with the city of North St. Paul. I'm the parks coordinator. We had some job shifting and my 
Anything from online? Yeah, let me start at the top here. Uh, we have Rachel Lindholm, <clears throat> City of Richfield. They just achieved step three and have not reported uh, for five yet. Smiley face. Uh, Jessica Schoen, City of Apple Valley. She says, we've been step three for a while, gathering information today. Also smiley face. Lauren Michaels, City of St. Louis Park. We've also been at step three for a while and would like to gather more information on reporting metrics. Beth Kallstad, City of Northfield. Step three for a while, just adopted a climate action plan and need to figure out how to pair implementation of that with step four and five. Meg Hanish, City of Bloomington. We're looking at potentially moving to step four and five. Interested in hearing about other cities' experiences. Uh, Kaya, Green Corps member, serving with the City of Duluth. We are currently step two, but I've entered enough to get us to step three. Sorry, Philip. Yeah, um, I know, like a huge number of entries. And we'll hopefully be step four when I leave. Sandeep Katala. Sustainability Program Coordinator with City of Morris, Minnesota. We are at step three, gathering information about next steps. Uh, Melissa Bartman, City of Red Wing. We are, at step we are a step five city. I am new to the position and had assistance with the report this past year. Uh, Anne Reich, 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 Volunteer for Marine on St. Croix, step three, looking at step four metrics. And I did my best with names. I apologize to anyone extra. who got. They can't even tell you if you did it wrong. That's right. Well, I think they would know, but <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, thank you for that. I think we've got a good mix of kind of some old, some new. Um, so hopefully we can try to use today as as a time to really share experiences from those of you that have been through it before um, and and maybe you'll learn something new also we do have some new metrics that we'll talk about so you will learn something new um, and then yeah so feel free to ask questions so let's jump in um, green steps have five steps yay yay there you already know that right um, so steps one two and three um, are looking at action oh this is a good time to say. We've decided between Philip and I that Philip is our guru for steps one, two, and three. So when it comes to joining as a new city or reporting action, Philip's your point person. When it comes to steps four and five, I'm your point person. I'm up here today. Um, and so maybe that helps think about our roles a little bit more. But we also do like everything else, and it doesn't matter. You can talk to anyone. We'll get you in the right place. So, Steps four and five take a big shift from reporting actions and doing that implementation side of things to looking at the metrics and measuring how those actions are actually um, affecting your community, um, as well as looking at areas of improvement or lack of improvement. Um, and so step four, step four has a minimum number of uh, action or metrics that we are asking you to report on um, and as well as some core metrics that are part of the um, metrics reporting tool and so we'll walk through those today there is a bit of a difference here between category a b and c communities a communities are larger communities we expect you to include five additional metrics of your choice so those can be metrics specifically from um, the reporting tools that you will be using or something maybe that you're calculating that we haven't included but you as a community have decided that it's important for you to be tracking. Category B communities are three additional metrics in addition to those core metrics and category C is just looking at those core metrics. Step five then is really what we're using to show improvement. And so for all category communities, we're looking for improvement in three metric areas. There are a specific amount 
of metrics that are Step 5 eligible. And so you'll have to identify what those are and um, figure out which ones you can implement. So far, all of our cities that have tried to get Step 5 have gotten Step 5. As we get further down the road, I anticipate, and the program is meant to be challenging, that you may not be able to achieve Step 5 every year that you try. Because you're, I'll give you a good example. And we'll talk about it when we go through with it too, but um, converting your street lights to LED. Once you're at 100%, you're at 100%. That's, that no longer becomes a useful metric for you to be showing improvement on. And so it becomes more challenging to find those metrics that you have to show improvement on. Oh, I also brought props today. <laughs> the full because everyone always asks us when you get your step four and five blocks, what do you do with them? Okay, so one, two, and three, easy peasy, right? Four and five, you'll get this back board, and it's, I don't think it actually has a sticky thing, but it's meant so. to go next to three, and you don't get like four blocks and five blocks, you get gear blocks. So the idea is that. These would be your step four blocks. So every year that you are reporting those four metrics, you get an annual block. And then for step five, every year that you're making those improvements in those three metrics, you'll get a year block. And we decided, you'll have to remind me, so let's, you get, if you're doing five, you're also being five. I think that's what we decided. We've <coughs> we gone long. back and forth, so we <coughs> I think so, yeah. So you yeah. get like, you know, more two blocks, and yeah. yes, you've achieved yeah. step five. You've also reported those metrics that are four requirements. That's what we got at, at, the, okay. at the League of Cities Conference. Thank That's you. Yeah. So I know we've gone back and forth, and I think we, we even have, gave some of you we, yeah, I think we did some old annual block. I don't know. So that's how that looks. Yeah, Thanks for the volume. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so why? Why step four and five are actually relatively new to us. For the longest time, we only had three steps in the program, um, and then four years ago now, we piloted four. with uh, <coughs> four and five communities. It's on the website. Where did we give you a pilot? You, I guess Burnsville was. I know Oak River was because I was there a couple others that piloted so that we could kind of test it out and then officially launched three years ago. Um, and so why, why is it that we're looking at data metrics? Um, if you don't measure a result, you can't tell success. If you can't see the success, you can't reward it. What are we a reward? And if you can't see failure, you can't correct it. So we're really looking at how, you know, how are we measuring those actions that, that we're implementing through this program? Um, so, of course, we're looking to gather data, create some kind of baseline information for our communities um, to really look at, over time, those trends and analysis. Um, and then use that information to communicate that to your staff, your elected officials, community members. Some of these, um, you know, you can equate to money saved. Energy saved, water saved, salt saved. I just saw Golden Valley's Facebook post this morning about all the salt reduction that's been happening. Um, you know, those are things that we can track and now use to communicate to our community. Um, when, you, when you're talking about politics and politicians, they want numbers, data. And so this is a tool to help get you that information. Um, as well as prioritize your actions, and I'll talk about that a little bit later about how it kind of helps close the circle on the uh, Green Step program. So we'll talk today about the process, but also the tools. Um, we'll, you know, the process is really to have a baseline understanding of what the metrics are, what is it that you're going to be looking at um, on an annual basis. Identify the key people in your community who have that information, it's not always going to be one person. Um, I'd be really impressed if it is one person. Um, and so you'll have to identify, you know, where are you getting that information from? 
take good notes because this is an annual um, reporting that you'll be doing. And so keep in mind staff changes, so take good notes about where you got that information from. If we're asking um, you to look at your metrics year over year compared to yourself, your city, then we need to make sure that we're being consistent in the data that, that's being collected so that you can actually use that to compare in the next year. Um, and then, of course, report those final metrics answers to um, the reporting tool um, to get that recognition. So tools that we have that we'll walk through next are the website, the worksheet, guidance documents for all of the metrics that we have, um, and the reporting tool itself. Okay, well first, what are the metrics? Um, I didn't print anything out for you guys because it's so, the worksheet that lists all of them doesn't really work well in printed form. Um, and so I definitely encourage you to go, we'll walk through it today, but I encourage you to go back and um, really review what those metrics are so you get a good um, understanding of what they are. But to highlight what they're called, um, we have the five different category areas. These are the same that you'll find um, all of our actions under, but we're identifying separate metrics um, under those categories. So under buildings and lighting, we have your city buildings, city lighting, as well as green buildings, so public um, and private buildings that are in the community. I'm highlighting here in yellow the metric um, categories that are required for step four, those core metrics that we're looking for to get for step four. Under transportation, we have your city police, um, infrastructure for biking and walking, car, transit, mobility options, transportation mode and modes and miles. So again, um, core for city police and transportation modes and miles. I did uh, put on here, this is only required for A and B category communities. Um, so there will be notes in there about uh, a couple things. Land use um, doesn't have any subcategories. Environmental management, we've got three core ones here. Um, open space, parks and trees, storm water, which we'll talk about a cool new, well, we talked about that at the last workshop, the cool new um, tool that, that we're using for uh, storm water metrics. Drinking water, wastewater for communities with collection systems. There are a couple metrics within this that even if you're even if you're in a metro, even if you're in the metropolitan area, there are still some metrics that you can report on. Um, surface water and solid waste. And then finally we have renewable energy, local food, jobs and employment, um, climate for those communities with regional indicators initiative data. Um, as well as space for additional metrics of your choosing. So uh, yeah, I was thinking about Golden Valley Salt metrics today and how you're already recording information, you're already recording data, that's an easy one to add into um, an additional metric. So we are going to jump over to the website and I'm going to give you a little tour of that. Um, I just updated it this week. So hopefully um, it's new to most of you. Other one. Want that one? Uh, yeah. Cool. Down. Oh, it's stinky. <laughs> For those of you on mine, feel free to go to the website right now. Um, you'll find it under the steps one through five tab, and then scroll down to step four and five, there's a link um, to get to this page. Yay. Oh, okay, well. So a bit of an overview of what the steps themselves are. We already um, covered that, so if you need a refresher about what um, additional metrics might be required, that's right there. So this is super big, can we, well, it's fine. <laughs> so key thing right here, 
2020 set four or five worksheet. Um, that we'll, we'll go into a little bit later, but there's a link there. And then if you scroll down, um, there's another same thing at the top of the guidance document section. So the worksheet is really kind of an Excel spreadsheet for you to take notes. Um, and, and we'll walk through that. And then all of our metric categories have a guidance document um, that we'll also go into. Is that better? I don't know. Yeah. For me, but I'm also really close to the screen, so let's no, <laughs> go back. Go back. Okay. okay. And then keep scrolling down. So a little reminder on how to submit. Um, we'll walk through that again. Um, but you'll be getting an actual reporting tool to enter in all of your information that then gets to, um, sent to me. Rationale, which we already talked about, why are we doing metrics reporting? Oh, and then here, so we did, let's see, who are cities? Burnsville, Eden Prairie, Elk River, Maplewood, St. Anthony, and Shoreview, um, who kind of piloted the step four program. Okay, we can go that to the PowerPoint. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to jump into the worksheet. So this is kind of just a one view of our buildings and lighting, buildings and lighting category and what it looks like. Um, and so very colorful, and that for a reason, um, we'll identify up at the top whether or not it's core. So that'll be in bold. Um, and these green boxes here are those metrics that are eligible for step five. And so those are the ones to keep an eye out. Those are the ones you want to be showing up in eye, which means we do need that baseline data. So, so work really hard to get information into these green boxes so that otherwise can't show improvement if you don't have that your data. So um, that's a good place to, to keep an eye out for. These blue boxes, um, I'll show you a little bit later, but these are used to calculate your city operations, greenhouse gas um, emissions. At a crude level, it's not perfect, but it gives you some kind of idea of where your city operations are. Um, for cities with regional indicators initiative data, that is showing your city-wide greenhouse gas emissions. This, these blue ones get to city operations, your city fleet, your city. Um, and then after each section, we have this justification or explanation box. This is really helpful for me. If you're reporting something, I don't know, maybe you don't know the percentage of LEDs in your community, but you know the number of lights. I don't know why you know that enough percentage. But maybe you're changing the unit here. Um, go ahead and put the number in. Let me know um, in this justification box that you changed a different unit. Um, other things that can go in there are justifications if, say, maybe you have the data from two years ago but not last year. Put it in there. It gives you a baseline um, information for, for the report. And so go ahead and put that in there. Put a justification in there. Um, to let me know that that's the older data. It's really helpful. All of these are numbered. So if you could just put them here, you know, all on 1.5 explanation. Um, don't go too crazy. I don't mean like yeah. paragraphs upon paragraphs to read. Uh, short and simple is fine. If you have any questions, of course, about whether or not something would fit in there, feel free to call or email me. Um, and then I will also, when I get your data, review it and follow up with you if I have any questions, if there's something I don't understand. I will also compare your data to other communities and what they're reporting and try to flag a number that's maybe totally different than what other communities are doing. Um, and maybe there's something that, that just needs to be tweaked a little bit, or maybe a decimal point got missed, right? Um, so try to really clean that data up for you as a part of that, and that's how, why those justifications um, do help that piece of it. So, Danielle, if we could go, oh, yeah, 
if we could go to the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so it's in Excel. It's in a usable format for you. It's not like PDF version or anything. So this is your document. We don't need this. Consider this your notes. Um, and so do, you know, save this for next year. Um, a couple really helpful tips are each of the categories here have the guidance document linked to it. So you can access it right from this worksheet. Um, as well as if there's anything like this number right here comes, well, actually a lot of these numbers come from your B3 benchmarking data. Um, so I pulled, we pulled out the link to B3 for you to be able to go log in and access that right away rather than having to think about how to get back there. So if there's anything that comes from a website like that, potentially, um, the links are over there on that column as well. The two rows or um, columns here rather um, are for you. So when you're in step, when you're working at step four for the first time, you'll only be filling out one of those columns. Um, not until you're trying to reach that step five level will you see numbers in both of these um, and the annual change. So for this, um, for step four communities, you'll be using, uh, this is kind of deceiving, but current year is the reporting year that you're doing. Um, so you'll be using this column to put in your uh, numbers or, or other data. Step five cities will have previous year um, values in this column that can then compare to your new reporting year numbers and think about what that change is. So that's really essential for these green boxes that are eligible for step five. Although it's helpful for all of them. Um, on the bottom here, you've got your different tabs for each of the different main categories. Um, and so, so I'm just scroll through. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, certainly information goes down much further. And we'll walk through these. When we get to this last tab, this is, it might be helpful to actually zoom out on this one. Um, I'm going to zoom. There we go. There we go. Okay. Try that. Yeah, that's okay. cool. Yeah, so, um, so this is the tab that will give you that city operations greenhouse, greenhouse gas emission information. So as you're filling out those blue boxes in this worksheet, um, they, it will auto-populate into this tab. So you don't actually have to do anything on this tab yourself. Just worry about filling out those blue boxes. If you don't feel comfortable with doing that and, and reviewing any of this, I can do that for you. So just let me know. It will auto populate things like your electricity consumption for all of your city buildings, um, gallons of diesel consumed in your city fleet. That will then um, work with your, well, not the, not the city one, the building one, will pull from your electric utility. Right now it's, it's automatically set to Excel, but you can change that to your, your utility and have a conversation with them about what they're emission factors if they're not already in here. This number then gets you those greenhouse gas emissions um, for the electricity section, and then these have other calculations built into them, which convert it to your um, greenhouse gas emissions for city fleet, water, wastewater, etc. So this gives you the information. The number we're looking for comes in this box in the summary table for total city operations. Sorry, I'm trying to make it so oh, you're not <laughs> reaching. Um, so you'll get, uh, you know, depending on if you're doing step four, step five, and if you have old data or just current data, um, a number in one of those boxes 
which will then also show you the change over time as a part of that. So again, looks overwhelming, but you don't actually need to do anything on that page. So for the GHD assessment, how, uh, I guess I'm just confused how that factors into the whole step four or five mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. well, is this another metric? It's a metric. Okay. It is one number. Okay. Of a metric. Okay. So we can jump back and, and walk through all of those metrics and I'll show you where that's at. Um, let's jump on to the Excel documents again. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Lynn, you want to start back over on the next tab? <coughs> or some other miscellaneous thing. Ah. Okay. We're just not there yet. Okay. <laughs> um, so car, transit, and bike, electric vehicle charging stations should be a relatively easy number for you to get. There are uh, websites that can help you pull that number. And then there's some yes, and, yes or no questions. Um, so type in yes, type in no. There are a couple ones that aren't actually a number. Um, so vehicle mile traveled, uh, some of this information comes from the census data. Uh, so there's links and information on, on directions on how to get to that information. Percentage of, um, ooh, percentage of city employees that commute 20 or fewer miles. Um, this is White, so it's a, you know, in a, um, well, four for category A and B cities. A lot of cities use just a simple survey out to your city employees um, to, to cover some of these questions. There are a couple in here um, city employees in a single occupancy vehicle, uh, as well as commuting 20 or fewer miles. 
So just a quick little survey to get some kind of number out about what your city staff are doing. So miles or minutes? Minutes. Oh yeah, we changed, yeah. Thank you. I think the census data, yeah. In a minute. Yep. Um, and then for commuters as a community, you know, what are your residents doing? A lot of the, again, a lot of this data is coming from census data. And anything else on this page? The assumption is that the 20 minutes are in a car because 20 minutes by car and 20 minutes by foot are going to be very different. Correct. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting. Mm. Andrew? <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm. I, I mean, I'm trying to get at the gasoline or emissions that you're emitting. Yeah. And so, if you're walking. Yeah. Um, land use tends to be one of our more challenging areas to get information for. Um, some of our communities. Maybe tracking these numbers already or looking at them um, through you know, different policies that the community is engaged on. Um, but some of these might take a little bit of digging to really get these, these uh, metrics. It is not a core category, um, so I wouldn't start here. Um, you know, if you have time to get to this, I, it is definitely valuable information um, for your community. Um, but it is probably one of our more challenging areas to do. And so examples of things that you're looking at to do in here are, is um, percent of land within a residential or mixed zoning district with dwelling units per acre at or above 7.0. That one actually could be done. It might, you know, it might take pulling permits and working with permitting staff um, to really get that number though. But this is a good area to have a conversation with um, your planning department because these are things that we've identified as important metrics to be looking at as a community. And so maybe if you don't get that the first year, we can have a conversation with planning staff to be thinking about how they can be tracking this on an annual basis um, so that you have that number the next year. And so um, other examples, market value per acre, um, acres of new development. Oh, oh. This tricked me. There's a year in here that I need to update. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, during 2019, on previously developed land, I'm gonna go back in there. Let's go with that. Um, and that's all that's in land use. So it's a short one, uh, but again, challenging. And if there's other metrics that um, the, the community is using, um, certainly feel free to, to add them in the justification box or I'll show you another area you can do that. So under environmental management, um, these are some fun ones. I like to see the numbers change every year. So um, this one is percent of total city acres in open space. Um, so information that should be in GIS data um, or other tools. Acres of parkland, uh, percent of housing within half a mile of a park. Um, and then we get into tree canopy. And so for those communities that have had a tree inventory, this is a good place to put your numbers. This is one area that doesn't change every year. I don't know any communities that do a tree inventory every year. Um, and so I, you know, put in your most recent data. If you have any tree inventory data about um, what your percent canopy coverage is, and then it goes into details about what your three most prevalent tree species are within the community to try to get an idea of what that diversity is. Um, net new number of trees planted, certainly something that um, could be tracked. There is guidance on this, you know, it's up to you to, yeah. I haven't looked at the guidance documents, and I, and I also don't think that my city has a short tree and short data. Is there information about how we're supposed to accomplish this uh, in, in the guidance? Yeah, so there are some tips and tricks on um, where you could be pulling other information that may not be as specific as doing an actual tree inventory. Yeah. And if you're a metro city, sometimes you talk to the Met Council and we can yep. that. Yep. One of the GIS layers, we have that expertise. Yeah, yeah, and even at a 
think there's a national GIS database that tries to identify um, at least your community acreage and, and that kind of stuff. And so there's some numbers that we can certainly plop in there. Um, Oh, net new number of trees planted. So this could be, you know, what the city itself is planting. It could be pulling um, permit data for new construction and looking at how many trees they were required to plant. Um, so it can really be up to you. Uh, and that's where that notification box comes in handy for you to kind of tweak what you're reporting so that you can remember what um, what it is that you looked at when you're reporting on the future year. This is one of our new metrics, um, 8.6A. So worked with Laura Milberg from the PCA this year to think about how we can add more metrics around resiliency and adaptation into the um, step four and five metrics. And this is one of the ones that we talked that we thought about, which was really looking at these new trees that were planted and whether or not they are considered likely to thrive. And so what we're looking at is what are the effects of um, our changing climate on uh, you know, what, what trees might be receptible to, to those changes, um, as well as what trees um, are best suited for what we know today about pest diseases um, and pests and diseases. So there's a number of tools and guidance around what those trees might be. Again, something to get you thinking about um, as a community if those, those trees are um, really a valuable asset. And so we're just looking for a percentage number on that one. And then I think we have more on this one. Can you scroll down? Okay, then we get into solid waste. This is also a really challenging one, and um, I know I know it bothers Philip a lot. I'm no idea. <laughs> um, it's really challenging to get data around solid waste for a city within city boundaries, right? Um, even with as your own city operations. I think most, most of you have probably been aware of that. Um, so we're really looking at what are your best numbers. Um, it's really helpful to work with the county on this one. Um, because they have specific reporting that they need to do to the state, um, give to the state, and so they can sometimes estimate. Um, you can talk to the haulers in your community. Um, again, we're looking at both information of city-wide, what are your residential and commercial numbers, as well as your city operations. So what are you pulling from your parks um, and city buildings? Uh, trash, recycling, and organics. Um, and so do your best. So this is another good area to take good notes so that you're being consistent with um, how you're collecting that information. It can really um, adjust a lot depending on where you're getting that information from. And so, um, you know, we're not looking too closely um, at this on a collective level of all of our communities. This, again, is really something for you to be tracking um, within your own community on an annual basis. So we can scroll down. All right. Is that it? No, we're not yet. Kristen? Yeah. How many communities are currently except for five? Oh, dang it. 15. 15. 17. 17. Um, Seven. 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 and 11. 11 at step five. 17 at step five. Six communities that have not assessed. We have a couple more that have done metrics reporting in the past, but didn't last year. So the number could be higher. Um, yeah, and it, it could be some. It, it could be you may not want to report every year because mm -hmm. because you're really looking to show improvement, and it may take two years. You know, maybe your tree planting cycle or capital budget is. <clears throat> spaced out over two years. And so maybe you, maybe you, wait. so I think Burns, so that's what, Sue, that's yes. what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. In every other yeah there is no, you know, certainly no penalty for you to skip a year or a few. Um, you know, this is a, a tool for, for your community to be using it and completely up to you 
um, to voluntarily report on. Yeah. Um, if someone doesn't know what city category they are, is there, where are those definitions? Yeah, so if you don't know, um, email Philip or I, and we will point you in the direction of the rubric that, that you have to fill out to identify what you are. So it's more than just what your city population is. It looks at how many buildings um, you operate, how many staff you have, uh, a few other, number of other things yeah, around there. Other things. We actually don't ask population. Um, Never mind, it's not on there. It's actually, yeah, it's actually, hey, right. no, it's sort of a capacity. So um, category A city would be a high capacity city. So that, that could be a small city in the metro area benefiting from uh, Med Council regional services. Yeah. Um, green caps? Yes, green caps. We, we're st sorry, we, we skipped a few on. We did? One. Yeah. Am I going up or down? Water, how did you skip oh. water? Oh, the water. Oh, water. <laughs> there, well, we, we skipped. All the way up to storm water. Yeah, we we got to go all the way up to nine. The surface water one. How did that happen? Sorry. Hey. Okay. okay. So storm water. Um, this was a pain last year, <coughs> um, but we're back to regular things this year, so hopefully it goes well. Um, we have a new. I didn't update that either. It wasn't. A, it wasn't oh. a pain so much as it was just. Tedious. It was, it was tedious. It was a big document. But did it help? I mean, it, it was very informative. Okay. It, I, I learned a lot from it, but it did take a while to get through everything. And this a, lot of, a lot of it went over my head, too. But okay. This year will be much easier. Okay. So, last month's workshop, which is recorded and almost online. It is, yeah. It is online. Mm -hmm. um, talked about stormwater infrastructure and the new reporting tool that the PCA developed. Um, in connection with Green Step uh, to really look at your stormwater assessment. And so um, thinking about policy ordinances um, and the infrastructure plans you have in place around stormwater. So there is a new tool, um, not yet not actually yet. live, um, but coming soon, that uh, is a questionnaire about um, your city stormwater um, action. And that will spit out a number for you, and that number goes into this box. Um, and so that will be right now it's a Wisconsin tool. That's the one we used a Wisconsin tool last year as we were kind of shifting, um, transitioning into this new tool. I'll also go in and update that on the website because that's not right. And then also a new metric this year. Um, as a part of that will be an adaptation score around your stormwater. Um, and that is that number will also come out of that same stormwater assessment tool. And so again, we'll lock the number in here. So will it be a number or like a percentage out of a what did we say? We said yeah. it'll it there Oh um, well it's a number between one and a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what it is. Yeah. yeah. Number percent. Yeah. I should change so the unit should be well, it's technically percent, and it's okay. auto. <clears throat> so the assessment is 40, let's see, 45 questions, and and then the the calculation is all done automatically. There's some questions that wouldn't be relevant, three or four, um, like if you're not a MS4, or no, if you are an MS4, maybe you have additional questions. Anyway, but you get an automated uh, number, and the questions are pretty. It's pretty straightforward. It'll look. It'll be in a survey format, just like the. Mm -hmm. uh, Step four or five metric survey. So it'll look well, same person's doing it, same format, same software. So, yeah. so we will notify that okay. when that's ready out the email list there. It's January. And update um, information on the step four five website. I was just going to ask when you anticipated to have it available, but January sounds like. Yeah, it might be mid. I don't know. What did Paul say last? Just doing both these things. Working on it. We had some. Let's say mid January. Transition going on. Uh, yeah. He's the only one right now that knows. Well, I know. That's not true. I actually know one person. Okay, so let's jump down to drinking water. Um, storm water is one of those core ones, so uh, do keep an eye out for when that assessment is available because you will be um, putting that number in there. We don't have that. Drinking water is optional um, for communities. This one has a lot of step five eligible metrics in here. Um, so it's looking at um, 
hopefully numbers that your city, if, if you um, have a, drink, a water utility, um, is already tracking or potentially even reporting to the state. Um, these kinds of numbers, residential gallons, uh, water use per person per day, um, annual city operations gallon, uh, which is split between summer and non-summer months, so trying to get at that irrigation question. Um, and then other questions, um, money that's being spent, we do get into both drinking water and wastewater annual energy use. Um, per, or in this case, per million gallons of water distributed. So it does get into those questions of the energy um, and use for, for these systems. Um, as well as down here, another one, uh, electricity used to treat and distribute water, um, natural gas to treat and distribute. So this will be information that gets pulled into that city operation, um, greenhouse gas. For wastewater, um, again, if you have your own wastewater collection system, all these questions should should be looked at um, because this is this one is core for for those cities. There are a couple questions in here that still apply even if you don't have your own wastewater collection system. Um, and so these are numbers that you can get from whoever provides that service um, around. Um, the ratio of inflow and infiltration volume. Um, this is a number that you should be able to, to get from that utility. Um, so it'll be a percentage then, won't it? It's the ratio. Uh, everyone always reports this differently, too. <laughs> so I have to come back and do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so typically I see like a I don't know what. Yeah, we did a little zero colon, yeah. colon, colon. Um, and so again, if it comes in a different format, I'll work with you guys to, to figure out what what the unit is. <laughs> um, and then again, electricity and natural gas used for those systems if you if you do have your own. Okay, is that all we missed? The sea water ones or something like that? Surface. <laughs> oh, surface water. Yeah. How much is the whole water one? Yeah. Many uh, metro communities, the wastewater treatment is done by the Met Council. We are um, working to provide those metrics and that format for all for all of our communities that are served by the Met Council. So uh, we will be putting a tool soon. I don't want to say a specific date, but very soon on, that should make that perfect. Easy. Yay! Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matt Council. Um, for surface water, we're we're looking at um, buffers that might be in place, uh, as well as water bodies. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of citizen monitors out there doing water clarity um, testing, or maybe ice in, ice out dates. If you want to start tracking that, um, as well as how many citizen lake or river monitors does your community have? Um, this is actually a, a number that the PCA um, does track, and so you can pull that number. Um, so a really good spot to put in your own metric as well, uh, impaired waters that might be in the community, um, other things that you're tracking, maybe it's chloride, um, you know, contamination in a water body or nitrates, or beach closures um, we were recently talking about. Um, so any of those things that, you, that you're tracking or would like to start tracking on an annual basis, again, it's a good place to, to put that information in and um, use it as a reminder to look at that every year. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Can I ask just two clarifying questions yes. from the webinar? Okay, so um, they have to do all the core metrics to get to step four. That is correct. Okay. And and can you, what are the green highlighted lines? Yeah. These green ones are anything that's eligible to show your step five improvement. And so um, when you've got two years worth of data in here and you can show an improvement, sometimes an improvement might be negative, sometimes an improvement might be positive, depending on what the metric is, right? Um, but these are ones, and again, this is, maybe a bad example because this is 
as you choose. Um, but this could be something that you can use to do that. And, and then to get step five, three of these green boxes need to show an improvement. Okay. Yeah, maybe one, um, uh, another clarification. So a, a metric is this collection of specific elements, so 12.1, 12.2a, 12.2. So <clears throat> when we say a core metric, it would mean giving us numbers for all of that, or, you know, checking with Kristen, as, as many of those specific lines, those elements, metric elements, as you can within that metric box. Yeah, you want to scroll. So 18, um, metric, 18, 18 metrics and 87 elements, metric elements. Do you have to have all of them? What am I doing? Every single one? Uh, uh, in, yeah. the um, in, in theory. <laughs> and the green tab. Thank you. Green tab. Got it. Yep. Okay. So that's why we put the, the core language up at the top because that includes number 14. So all, all anything that starts with 14 in that block then would be considered that core. We're looking at can you fill out all of them? Including the blue one. Including the blue one. Including the blue one. Everything. Yeah. So everyone. But if you if there's a real problem, talk, you know. Do we are flexible and yeah. open to things. That, you know, if it's if it's not working for you, I mean, obviously this is a challenge. We're a challenge program, right? Um, but we don't want it to be like too challenging. So let us know. We we'll work with you. Why isn't every metric eligible for set five? Yeah, so when we developed the program, and maybe Philip, you can talk more about that process, but there were some key metrics that were identified as really being those um, challenging metrics, but also, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of um, high profile, um, high, high impact. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, metrics that, that really, you know, we would expect at the highest level of the Green Stuff program, a community to really be working for. Did you do 14 2A? This one's new. 14.2A. Yeah, we, um, we just added like a, a letter after the number because that was here. Um, so this one, under renewable energy, we're looking at storage capacity. And so this is really getting at. Um, you know, should there be a natural disaster or, um, you know, the utility, utility power outage, uh, what capacity does the community have to have electricity available um, through storage? So there's new guidance on this one. Um, and can we make those stuff by You know, it uh, we should go back and look at it. Yeah. So this may or may not turn green. Um, it probably will. Yeah, I think we add, I think we only added two or three new possible metric elements. So um, otherwise, we're looking at. Uh, renewable energy that's being produced both uh, city, city owned, city um, <coughs> maintained, and then private um, renewable sites that, that are in the community. So number of sites and electricity being generated, um, uh, energy purchases, maybe through the solar garden, um, those kinds of numbers. Down. Then we jump into some oh, more sorry. Um, yeah, social, community um, related topics. There's one on local food. How many local food venues are in the community? Um, you know, that can include farmers markets. Um, percentage of housing that is within um, distance of one of those venues. Jobs and employment, uh, these are like really generic, right? Um, but again, this is, this is information that's coming from straight from census data. 
Yeah, I'm really curious. Since we have a new census, I mean, we won't, we won't show it this year. Thanks. But I'm curious as we get new census data, how you know if we're going to see big shifts in some of these trends. Um, go down. Okay. So this is my favorite section. This is the climate section. Um, this is Corrigan for those communities with regional indicators initiatives. If you do not know if you're one of those communities, certainly let me know. Um, or there's guidance. Any of these links will take you there. Um, and it shows all the cities that have information for their community-wide um, greenhouse gas emissions. So these numbers come directly from that regional indicator data. This one, 17.4, is that number that comes from this tab. So you can either put it in there or I can work with you to get that number. I lied. That's 17.5. That's why I highlighted it, so I wouldn't forget. This number comes from the next tab. This number is, is an addition of 17.1 through 3. So it's whole above those numbers. Yes, and also we are working yes, you are. providing all uh, I actually already got on the uh, on those transportation emissions so all the med council cities so that's an RP that will be available. So if you're not on the regional indicators, although I think regional indicators are most of the mm -hmm. um, transportation data for everyone, um, you'll find some of that in the med council. But also for waste, we're also working that in energy as well. So I'll be happy to tell you more. Yeah, but again, I mean, if you want to get Mauricio's contact information, if you're a metro community, you can do that today, or just let me know and I can put you in contact with, with him to get any of that metro. So I think, I think what, what we're doing is that the data on the regional indicators site, which, which Kristen has linked to there, for metro cities, we will now be going to Met Council's data. Um, but if you're outside the metro area, seven county metro, if you're a city outside the seven county metro area, uh, the regional indicators data for community wide is all we have. And many green step cities, but maybe not. I know Mauricio also worked in a previous slide. Um, at <laughs> yes, so the regional indicators, I think there's a fundamental difference between how they do transportation data. They've been doing. Sorry? Talk loud for the webinar. Yeah, sorry. So what they've been doing is uh, using traffic volume, so just how many cars go through a given road per year. Uh, that is helpful, but as you go to smaller communities, that that is kind of a that can lead to skew results. Uh, what what we did instead is looking at origins and destinations of vehicles, so we have a better idea of you know how many vehicles are coming and going from the community. So that's going to be available for you really soon. In fact, if you're really interested in it, uh, just talk to me and I can uh, maybe hand it to you through a different means. Uh, but we will have an official release for this and it will be an incremental project, meaning that we will be adding more and more metrics as, uh, as we find they're useful for communities. So it's up to you to let us know what you know what we should be working on because we really want to uh, be supporting communities on this, on this work. That say, I think we're pretty advanced with the tool and it's going to be a really nice dashboard, friendly, user friendly. So it's coming. Yay! You guys in the metro area are so lucky. <laughs> and for those of you in Greater Minnesota, we're working on it. And I don't know how we're going to But for Greater Minnesota, regional indicators, yeah. that is a valid method what they're doing. It's not the ideal method, but it is valid and it's something that you can use mostly with transportation. Um, you can get your vehicle mass travel emissions from that. So, go for uh, if you're outside the metro, go to regional indicators. You might find your data already there. Yep. Um, some of the data in regional indicators might be out of date, so you're probably not going to find it from last year. Um, in that case, we're just looking for the most recent data that they provide. Um, so go ahead and put that number in. We might, you know, if it doesn't get updated for a few years, we might be putting that same number in for a few years. But um, again, it's just it's setting that baseline for us. So, no, wait, there's more. Is there a question? 
They were asking who was speaking right now. So, Mauricio oh, Leon. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. My name is Mauricio Leon. I'm a, a senior researcher at the Metropolitan Council, and I'm working on greenhouse gas emissions at the regional, county, and uh, municipal levels. So, if you have more questions on that, I'll be happy to give you my contact. Although you can just uh, do Mauricio that Leon at MECC then state MN. Yes, and I know we have your contact information in some of the guidance sheets. Excellent. Um, so as you're working through some of these, there are specific contacts in one of them um, that you can reach out to. All right, let's scroll on down. Yeah, you know what I'll, uh, you know what I'll do? So, um, so oh, uh, the best okay. practice 24 uh, metrics and community engagement, or benchmarking and community engagement, there is an action number three, which is um, sort of track metrics. I'll, I have the regional indicators website there. Mauricio, I'll put your contact information, description of this in that. So it's 24.3, that action. So the implementation tools tab, I'll, I'll add Mauricio there. So that would, yeah, an ongoing way, easy way to find Mauricio. Yeah. Thank you. So um, there's a stormwater. We talked about a metric that was kind of using the stormwater manual. Best management practices for what percentage of those the open space was actual? That one didn't go on. It didn't go. No. Um, so the last one here, number 18, um, are additional metrics. There's a couple ideas in here around social vulnerability, um, livability score, and civic participation and civic capital index scores, all of these take you to um, websites for different uh, questionnaires or uh, information that can that can provide these scores. And they, these are optional. There's also blank ones here. So this is a, another good area to be at providing um, additional metrics that your community may be already tracking or want to track on an annual basis um, to, to put right in there. Um, just provide some information in the justification box about what those are. So, that is the worksheet. One helpful tip I didn't mention. Um, there's not a column for this, but I found it really helpful when I was working through this um, at, with the City of Elk River when I was there, to add another column as a notes column, maybe two, with who the city staff was that you worked with, or other staff, maybe it's the county, maybe it's the Met Council, um, who the staff person was that you worked with, so you have their contact information for next year, um, as well as any notes about, uh, you know, where you got that information or, uh, you know, what timeline that information was on, that kind of thing. So go ahead and um, use it as a worksheet. That's what it is. So, Danielle, we can move back to the PowerPoint unless anyone has any questions about this before we jump out. Can I do better than that? Not sure. We'll try. Okay. Hey. So, like I mentioned, each of these have guidance documents. Um, each guidance document includes specific definitions. What is renewable storage capacity? What might that include? Um, as well as data sources. Where might you get that information from? Um, you know, sometimes it's a website, sometimes it's just a city information, you know, city data or, or permit. Um, it doesn't matter. There's also information on any calculations or how to report that number, if there's anything that needs to be, um, you know, manipulated a little bit, as well as the rationale for having that category and those metrics, um, including. Um, step five metric target, if there are anything that, that relates back to any uh, maybe statewide goals or, um, you know, where else do we get those targets from? Where do we get them from? Uh, we've looked at the uh, STAR or, or LEAD for yep. city um, target numbers. We've looked at um, state agency numbers. Yeah, um, yep. so if you we'll put things in there to help guide you to where, you know, you might be uh, wanting to target those numbers for. Um, and then, of course, contact. So I hate to make you do this, but can you go back to the website? Yep. And we'll open up one of those documents really quick and just give you a, a quick tour. So if you go um, up, 
to the list. Yep, and click on any one of those. So these are between like two and three pages each, yeah. mostly. So it shouldn't take that long. Yeah, it shouldn't take that long. Okay. Try another one. Okay. Yep. What a PDF. It's the computer. It's not you guys. <laughs> it's this is a miraculous <laughs> setup, <laughs> but it's sensitive. <laughs> Yay. Okay, there we go. So this, you know, will reiterate, you know, some of that information you'll find in other places too, like on the worksheet, um, but it'll identify what those metrics are. Um, anything in green, again, are those step five eligible metrics. Um, it, you know, I'll remind you that it's a core metric for oh, all category communities. Um, let me scroll down. So there are plenty of definitions in here. What is open space? Uh, it's really helpful to look at the end of each of these because it'll tell you which metric it, it's connected to. Um, and so within a city residence, you know, we, we need to know what that definition is for metric 8.3. Um, down. Tell me when to stop. Yeah. Okay, data sources. So this is probably where, where you will spend the bulk of your time. Um, where where is that information you know coming from potentially? And so uh, you know keep look again at these identifiers about what metric it might be connected to. There might be more than one way to get that information. Um, if you're in the Met Council, you know there's obviously this way. Uh, if you're not, you're probably just looking at your, your parks and recreation department. Um, plenty of links if for tools that can help you get those numbers. Um, so take a look. If you have questions or if there's another data source that's not listed on here that you would like to use, um, just let us know um, if, if it works for you. It probably works for someone else, so we can get that added. And then down to the next section. So some information here on you know how to calculate or uh, report that number. And so again, it'll list what metric that's um, connected to and um, provide some information on, on what unit to put it in, for example. And then next one. Rationale. Um, some information about why we're doing it, and then down here, um, you know, this will say there are no statewide goals for these metrics. Um, but here's some information to be thinking about. Uh, you know, star community rating system suggests and expect. So it just helps give you some guidance on um, maybe what to be targeting or. Uh, really helpful tip for you if you're way above that number to go back to city council and say, hey, look, look, we're doing this um, really well compared to what the recommendation is. And then finally, at the end, um, we'll have contact. So a couple people on here um, to contact, but certainly um, you can feel free to contact Philip or I or anyone else with Green Stuff specifically, and um, we can get you off to the right people too. Okay. So a question from the webinar. If people are downloading the file, which I'm guessing is referring to the spreadsheet, but you're making changes to that, how should they deal with that? Um, I'll update it by the end of this week. The minor changes. Maybe the guidance look. documents should be all correct. Um, by the end of this week. And we can, when we post Danielle the recording, mm -hmm. we can include the attachment of that updated worksheet, right? We can include a link to it. Okay. Yeah, well, the link, right. the link that takes you to the website will yeah. take you also to the updated version. Yeah. So that should be covered. Okay. Or email me. I'll get you the most recent one. Okay, we can go back to the PowerPoint.
point. Okay. Um, uh, question from the webinar. I thought you emailed out a specific link for each city to upload. Will that be updated too? Yeah. Okay. I'll jump back to the PowerPoint. We'll cool. That. Do this one? Nope. The other one. <laughs> there we go. So, reporting tool. Um, this will be available mid-January, about the same time that it was available last year. It was new for us last year. We're doing the same thing again this year. It's technically a survey, um, but this is the tool will, where you will be entering all of your information. This is really helpful for us to make sure that data is coming in consistently um, and comes to us in a way that we can then actually do fun things with it. Um, we are we have been working with some PTA staff on doing some reporting, uh, visualizations of the data that's coming in. So uh, hopefully someday in the future we'll have some kind of dashboard um, that would provide a way for cities to look at um, your trends um, for some key metrics that make sense to do that with, um, or compare your numbers to another community um, even. And, and so we're looking at ways to, to take some of these metrics and um, probably a lot of those step five eligible metrics, those key ones with the high impact. Um, so this is a helpful way for us to do that. Cities will get um, an email sent to them with a unique link to the Green Step Coordinator. Um, the link is shareable, so you can you know share with another staff person if they're um, if they have a specific section they need to fill out or something like that. Um, you can go ahead and do that. It, you can close out of it and then reopen it again, save it before you actually submit it. Um, so it is a, a tool for you to use. The worksheet is nice because um, it's on your desktop or whatever and you can just put all your notes in there. This is really just the data. Um, and then of course those justification boxes because you're entering down any of that information you can copy in there. Reports um, for step four and five metrics are due on May 4th, May 1st, um, to be eligible to actually get a block at the League of Minnesota Cities annual conference. Same with any of your action reports. Um, and so we're looking at that date. So you have between January and May, any time within there, um, to actually fill out this tool and, and send it over to us. Um, I, so between May, uh, so for the month of May, I might work back and forth with you a little bit if I've got questions on some of your um, metrics. Um, and so you might uh, hear from me after after you do the system. So just a couple of screenshots from the reporting tool. Um, so this one would be traffic signals, percent of LEDs. You'll, you don't need to put the unit number in there. That's already identified for us, so it's just the number, so 100 for 100. Um, if you are working towards step five, or maybe you've done um, step four in the past and taken a couple of years off, this will automatically show your previous year data. And so if we have old, old data from you from any previous year, it'll put that number in there. So you get an idea of, of um, a reminder as, what, as to what you reported. So maybe it was like, completely different number, you're like, oh, you know, that's not being consistent with what I did before. You can think about that a little bit more. If it, uh, for any correct, any <clears throat> sort of retroactive corrections, just put that in the justification. Yes, please. If there's anything you've identified, like, oh, this got reported wrong previously, um, do let me know that, and I can go back in our historic database and change that number um, for you back in time, so do let me know that. Um, here's another screenshot. The recording tool itself also has links to those guidance documents, you need to reference those, as well as links directly to any websites that you might be able to get those numbers from. Be charging stations, for example, if you write um, to the plug share website. Uh, this is also color-coded, so the green highlighted ones are those step five eligible metrics, and blue highlighted ones are for those city operations, um, greenhouse gases. So a couple tips. Um, time frame that we're looking at is typically calendar year. So for um, your 2020 reporting, we're looking at the calendar year of January, December to 2019. 
in those guidance documents that will say, you know what, maybe that just doesn't make sense for the metric, um, and try to help you think about a different timeline. So not all the timelines are going to necessarily be the same for you that you're reporting. Um, and again, if, if you're changing that for some reason, just let just put a note in the box. Um, if there isn't something for that previous year, most recent data is the most helpful, um, rather than keeping it blank. And, and some, sometimes the, the number you're reporting is a number on a, on a date certain, like December 31st, 2019, and sometimes it's a number that represents 12 months. Yeah. yeah, so the walk score number that you're reporting, it's not like calculating a year's worth of, of scores, it's, it's one day in time, so um, you know, it's whenever you pull it. For that one, I don't really use justification of when you pull that information. Um, but there are some different timelines associated with it. In terms of values, um, numbers with decimal points, um, certainly no units in that actual reporting tool. Um, I don't even think it'll let you most of the time, and so hopefully it'll give you a little uh, reminder. There are some multiple choice questions, um, as well as those written boxes for justifications or any additional metrics that you might have identified that you want to include, you can add into that reporting tool. Um, links are available, and then just in terms of note taking again, remember we're asking you to do this um, annually to, to review, uh, and so taking good notes is really helpful. If they are working on step four items, um, will they also need to look back to step one through three and amend those? I'm assuming if they decided that there was okay. No. Um, can you think of any reason? Well, it might it might be that in looking at the looking at a at a metric element, it, it jogs your mind that oh, we never reported an, an action that mm -hmm. whose sort of physical implementation contributes to this number. So it might spur you to go back and edit or add an action report, but not necessary. The two are. Not yeah, there are no actual requirements for actions that need to be taken other than you need to be at step three. Um, go back to the yeah. but okay, can't manage, but you don't measure. That's Drucker. Yeah. Um, and so okay, this is my example B3 benchmarking. How many of you use B3 benchmarking? How many of you have actually learned something from B3 benchmarking? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So maybe like what example? What have you What have you learned? The return on investment is amazing for almost everything and uh, everything we do and uh, saves a lot of energy. Does anyone identify like an issue with the building because they were tracking their data? I know Duluth has. They found like I don't. They found meters that were like working that weren't connected to the, I don't know. Weird things. Garage um, doors left open all winter. Yes, you know, be. things that like spike you're like, oh, that like number that. is crazy high this month. What's going on? So this really, you know, provides that example of why it's important to track data, because um, then you can really use it um, to identify, you know, potential problem areas uh, or find those really key examples of things that have worked really well. Um, that now you can share that story to your council members or um, your community or to another city. Okay, so this is my lovely diagram of what step four and five does for us. Um, so we're, we're kind of starting here and determining action. So that's really your steps two and three that the cities are working towards. You're implementing those actions, you're recording them into uh, the website, right? Uh, then we're jumping into step four. We're recording those metrics. How are those actions being implemented? What are those numbers that we're getting out of those actions? If we're showing improvement, yay, great job. Let's just keep recording and thinking about those metrics and the actions that we've implemented. If we're finding areas that we're not showing improvement in, this helps prioritize the actions that we need to now go back into the website and start implementing. So, you know, what are those more challenging actions that we can do 
to make sure that our metrics and information is actually being improved upon annually. That's my really terrible explanation of what this does. Okay, thank you. Thank no, you. I, thank I, you that's great. No, it's like <laughs> I see it as Why a are we doing this like, Yeah. Point? And so, you know, we've identified step five is high. So there's not going to be a step six. Um, and so this helps close the loop and identify how we can prioritize actions that may need to be implemented. And so in that sense, we do encourage you to go back and continue implementing actions, of course. This just helps prioritize what those what those might be. It is continuous. Not only are we continually improving the program, um, we are looking, um, you know, as this to provide this as a tool, the Green Step program as a tool for your community to do continuous improvement in environmental um, sustainability and climate action. Just that's all I have. Any questions? Well, you know, I might have. So, so we feel like step five, like. No more steps, but we have contemplated yeah. some sort of a energy climate. Um, I said that like very casually. Yeah, right. Like, but we're done. No, we're we're not. And we're sort of pondering. You know, I mean, obviously, with so the governor has come out with an executive order, and we assume some renewed sort of uh, assistance, emphasis, funding, direction for. Um, driving down greenhouse gases. So we imagine that there may be some sort of a, a climate recognition part of the Green Subsidies Program, but it will. I don't think we're going to. Supplemental. Yes, it will not be called Step 6. So, yeah. so um, we'll get back to some workshopping opportunities, but I wanted to mention uh, before we break our January workshop, which is going to be so fun. Um, we are celebrating 10 years of Green Step next year, and so we're really going to kick off the year in January with a workshop. Um, January 8th, 9 to 11.30, we added a whole extra half an hour, and we're going to be in multiple locations. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be in St. Paul. We won't actually be here. We'll be over at the Pollution Control Agency office just down the street. Um, but we'll also be in Rochester, Marshall, Brainerd, Detroit Lakes, and Duluth. Um, and if everything goes well and according to plan, we will be connecting the uh, webinar to all of those um, different cities so that we can feel like one big happy family and say hi to each other um, and celebrate together. So, also, poll. Who would rather have coffee cake or birthday cake? Coffee cake? Birthday cake? Oh, yes! Uh, <laughs> we're battling it out. Am I, I don't know. Maybe we'll be both. I don't know. Cupcakes. Cupcakes. Yeah, cupcakes. There will be some kind of cake available. Um, and so there is uh, RSVP available on the Eventbrite, Eventbrite uh, Green Step page. I also sent it out in the email listserv uh, last week. Two weeks ago. Um, and so you can sign for that. And we absolutely encourage you to invite other city staff. Uh, your mayor, council members, planning commissioners, uh, citizens, volunteers, the more the merrier um, to that event. Yeah, the mayor of Duluth will be there, the, um, uh, the new um, chair of the climate, uh, the governor's uh, uh, climate initiative uh, will be there speaking via video link to all the, um, so it'll be interesting to hear what she has to say. So, yeah, some we've never done this, so fun. Yeah. Stay tuned. One vote, one vote for birthday cake from the webinar. Hey, one more birthday yeah, no, no, no. Oh. Okay. It's early, so everyone's like, no, we don't want birthday cake. Yeah. But I know everyone <laughs> has to have cake for breakfast at some point in their life. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> okay. So we are going to uh, break now again, like I said, if, if you feel like you're totally good to go, feel free to head out for the day. If you, grab. oh, and grab, there's still bagels and coffee and tea available and barbecue. Almonds? Almonds, yes. <laughs> um, so do feel free, but if you have questions or if you want to connect um, and pair up with, uh, you know, another city that's here, or if you want to talk to Mauricio or anything, 
um, do feel free to stay and I'll walk around as well as anyone online. If there's specific questions, I'm happy to help answer those or get those questions from Danielle and follow up with any of those. Yes. Can I hang on for like third board meeting if anyone has a question? Could you pull up the spreadsheet so that people can kind of look at it? If they, if yep, we can do that. So. Again, hope to see you in January and beyond um, with uh, we've got a few more workshops after that, too. Another vote for birthday cake. We're um, having birthday cake. Nice job. This is Zoom. Uh, do you, do you need the card to vote? I will give that back to you. I put the information Perfect. into the chat box. Thank yeah. you for giving that. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good. How are you? Good. So, I'm... On regional indicators, how can you get five hundred Because I know like some of our data for health is like three years old and some of it is yeah. current. Is it just up to them and how is that being here? I I just don't know much about it. Yeah. But hopefully my council data will be yeah. Yeah. You guys were also talking about the solar data too, right? Yeah, so we're, we're trying to also like merge some of those. Yeah. Yeah. 